you welcome to our Sunday school lesson for the 20th of August 2023 and our topic is reject deceivers and demonic doctrines let's pray Lord we come before your throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need like this without you O God we can do nothing it's only through you that we can do valiantly therefore Lord I receive grace and apostleship precious Holy Spirit take over this time glorify your name use me O God even to reach out to your people in the name of Jesus Lord circumcise every ear and every mind Lord God that will hear and will listen and give us understanding hearts and the grace to obey you thank you our father we have prayed in Jesus name Amen reject deceivers and demonic doctrines let's take our first reading from 1st Timothy 4 1st Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2 now the spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies in hypocrisy having their own conscience seared with a hot iron okay let's also look at second peter 2 verses 1 to 3 second peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 but there were also false prophets among the people even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed by covetousness they will exploit you with deceive with deceptive words for a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber okay now one of the things that jesus talked about as the first sign or as a major sign for the end times a major sign of the end times is deception he says do not be deceived don't let yourself be deceived why did Jesus emphasize this and Timothy has emphasized it Paul has emphasized it and so on and so forth Peter emphasized it it's so important the unfortunate thing is People who are so deceived will go where the deceivers go. And where do deceivers go? They will go to where the master deceiver will go. That is Satan. That is the unfortunate thing. When you are deceived, you are deceived. It will take the grace of God to, for such a person who is so deceived to make heaven. That is why we need to be very, very careful. The Bible says that deceivers will come and they are here. They have always been here. There are two types of deceivers. Number one, those that genuinely repented, genuinely got born again, genuinely following God, genuinely preaching the word of God but somewhere along the line they imbibed false teaching and they went off the track the second group are those that have never ever repented they have come as agents of Satan in our churches and in our fellowships and again they are there make no mistakes about it they are in every church they are in every denomination 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll come back to it. But, so, there are those that are homegrown. And there are others that have come from outside for the purpose of deceiving Christians. And I have seen both. How do you know them? Those that come from outside, especially a denomination that is derailed or that have gone away. They rarely ask people to repent. They target Christians. Those that are in the church already, those that are in Christ. They just want you to derail with them. We'll come back to that. And sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference. I mean, you go to a church and there's a pastor. And he tells you, look, I'm the pastor here and I've been here for five years. It's difficult to tell whether the error came in. Whether this person was born again, spirit filled, and then imbibed error. Or they came from outside, already trained. To deceive but the sum total or the end product is the same beware of ministers number one okay why do these people actually begin to deceive the Bible says let, let's look at first Timothy let's look at first Timothy chapter 6 Begin to read from verse 6. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with this we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drawn men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows but you O man of god flee these things and pursue righteousness godliness faith love patience gentleness okay the bible does not change the standard of God does not change. The word of God is true. As it was in the first century. So it is now. Are you a man of God? Are you a pastor? Are you an elder? Are you a deacon? Are you a deaconess? The Bible says, number one, there's nothing wrong with you being rich. The Bible says there is that there is nothing wrong with money. But the Bible says the desire, you want to be rich. You're a preacher, you want to be rich. As rich as this, that, or the other. You need to be careful. Let, this is not a popular message. You need to be careful. God who called you to be a preacher didn't call you to be rich. Can I say that again? God can bless you and you become rich. But if you have come to the ministry or you have been in the ministry and then you decide to get rich, you need to be very careful. The Bible says if you have food and you have clothing and you have a roof over your head, you should be content with that. Contentment is one of the things that is lacking today in the church. And the Bible says many ministers and many Christians have paid themselves through with many arrows. We really need to be careful. The love of money starts small and you will not even know. And before you know it, all your messages are tailored towards money and material possessions. It starts small and then it starts creeping in. Just like Judas Iscariot. Judas started small and he was stealing money. And Jesus saw him. We didn't have the details but it's possible that Jesus would have warned him many times. Hey, be careful. There were a thousand shekels here. 
Now it's 900. And Judas will say, okay, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. And of course, until the Bible says he became, he became callous. And his heart, his conscience became sad with hot iron. Nothing could penetrate again. And in the book of John, where Jesus says, whatever you do, do it quickly. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. John 13, from verse 21. John 13, 21. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another. Sorry, go to verse 20, 25. Then, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I dip it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. Okay. And then he, he got commissioned and he went out. When you read that scripture, you think Jesus particularly commissioned um, Judas to say him, no. Satan found a vessel that was prepared for that mission. Judas, are you a minister? Are you a teacher of the world like me? And you start little by bending the word. You start little by sharing testimonies that didn't happen. You start little and then you graduate to such a point where you begin to borrow testimonies. Oh, I went to Calabar and I just raised my hand and a thousand people fell and it wasn't you. You know that you had that testimony from somebody else and now you say it was you. Gradually, you develop ways of making money from the congregation. Gradually, you begin to tell lies. And before you know it, you don't know the difference anymore. We need to be very careful. Once anybody has instituted sin, it doesn't matter what it is, either sin or error. You're doing the wrong thing. You are preparing the grounds for Satan to come in. And come into your mind, and come into your heart and can take over completely. That is what happened with Judas. Just begin to twist the word a little, twig it a little, and you're going. The Bible says that anybody that breaks the edge, the serpent will bite him. That is what you're inviting. Are you a liar and you're in the church? You're making way for the lying spirit to come in and take over you and possess you and oppress you and torment you are you a fornicator you're making way the first time it happened you cry and you confess and god forgives you of course god is always ready to forgive you but then you make a way for satan to come in for demons to come in and before you know it you now teach doctrines of demons that is the way it works. Gradually, gradually, more and more error. The other group that is increasing are political preachers. Remember, we are talking about deceivers and demonic doctrines. Around our place, especially in Nigeria and especially in Igbo land. People are be be it's becoming popular for people to say, hey, Christianity is white man's religion. We want to go back to our own religion. I ask you, which one is your own religion? Which one? Let us remember that the Igbos are supposed to. One school of thought that the original Igbos left were Hebrews and they left Egypt before the exodus 
they had already left Egypt and migrated this way. Therefore, they had partly the uh, uh, the Judaic Judaism, the practice of Judaism, the worship of one true God, but they also had picked up idolatry from Egypt. And so what we find today as the traditional Igbo worship is a mixture. We still have the, the God that we know, Opasidelu, which people worship in various ways. But we also have other ways and other things that people worship. A mixture. So, the other thing to know, like we have said many times, Christianity is not a white man's religion. Jesus wasn't a white man. He started in the Middle East, in Israel. And then they took the mantle and went to Europe. And then other people went to China and they went to America. And we also got it. But before then, before colonialism started, there were Bibles and there was Christianity, even in Africa. Let's not go there. But anybody who is telling you that, oh, Christianity is white man's religion, He's just trying to deceive you. He's trying to deceive you. I live in a country where you see Muslims, they come, they say, ah, Christianity, now white man's, now for white people. Muslim, Islam, is for Africans. Which one would you follow? <laughs> My brother, Jesus, Jesus, as far as he has no earthly nationality, for now, he has no earthly nationality. He was born in Israel. Why he was here? Yes. He was Jew. He was a Hebrew. But now, he has no earthly nationality. Don't be deceived. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. Praise the Lord. Therefore, those ones, we know them. And they are increasing. There's other things that you need to know. If you see a minister, if you see a preacher, if you see a teacher, it doesn't matter how good he is. And he cannot stop sinning. You need to run away from that kind of person. Those that go into error, because the Spirit of God leaves them, they may still speak in tongues. They may still heal people. They may still perform miracles, but the Spirit of God has left them. Trouble. They cannot, because... Satan takes over. They cannot tell the truth consistently. Look closely into their lives. You will see lying and you see fornication. And of course you see the love of money. Look for those three things. Run away from such a minister. Run away. And of course, a lot of them begin to mix scriptures just to fit their purpose. Okay, pastor, but you know, you are a woman, you are a lady. Okay, pastor, this thing you are trying to do, the Bible calls it adultery. It's called it fornication. You are married, say, ah, don't worry. That's not exactly what the Bible means. It means that God knows that we'll be tempted and so on and so forth. Run from that person. That person is trying to deceive you. They cannot stop sinning. The other thing to look for, any minister that has become over-possessive, they are now Lord and Master, run away from them. Jesus says that you have only one Lord, you have only one Master. But these people will command you and command you and make you respect them as a woman more than you respect your own husband. That is not true. That is not true. Go back. Go back and read Numbers 30. And you see the authority that God has given to a father, a husband, in his home. Are you a woman of God? Are you a Christian? And the pastor says, hey, come to my house by 9 o'clock. Don't say, yes, pastor. No. 
So, okay, pastor, I will ask my husband, I will discuss with my husband first. Because that's what the Bible says. A lot of women have fallen into adultery with their pastors, not because they wanted to, but because they are so afraid. Every, every uh, prophecy, every vision, every dream, they believe it, even when it doesn't tally with the word of God. We need to be careful. Deceivers abound. And like I was saying before, like I was saying before, the danger is that when you are deceived, you are deceived. When you are deceived into error, you are deceived. When you are deceived into sin, you are living in sin. Jesus will not say, okay, you were deceived, therefore come to the right. No. 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 Now, let's look at 2 Timothy. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2. Uh, 15. 2 Timothy 2 15. But diligent, sorry, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Another version says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. How do we avoid error? How do we avoid error? Man of God, woman of God, child of God, you have a Bible. Study it. Read the Bible. Read other books that teach holiness. Read, study. So that when somebody, doesn't matter who they are, begin to go out of line, you will know. And say, okay, pastor, no, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. A few times somebody has come and said, look, God says, blah, 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 blah. I say, excuse me, no, God didn't tell you. He said, how do you know? I said, I know. Because the Bible doesn't say that. Some people said to me, said, hey, today, your people, you know, there is a ceremony. Don't go. As soon as you go, you are dead. Oh, Really? Unbelievers are there. They haven't been killed. Christians are there. They haven't been killed. It's Joe that will just be, once I pass, they blow it. And then I fall. I said, no. I went. And nothing happened. Why? The Bible says that my life is hid with Christ in God. There are times, of course, when there's danger signal. And you know you have to take precaution. That's fine. That's fine. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to know. Number two, we need to pray with all prayer. We need to be close to God in prayer. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and being filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to pray in tongues. We need to be close to God. So that even if you don't know the passage of scripture, when somebody starts talking, the spirit will warn you in the first place, hey, watch it. Danger signal. And then you can, you can, you can be on your guard. Then you enter a church. That's not your church. You went to one and you said I must go to you say I must go to church and you go to church. And they start doing something. By discerning of spirit, you know God is not here, and you get out. Those are ways. Finally, the Bible commissions all of us to contend for the faith, and that is in uh, Jude, Jude one three to four. Let's read that and we'll close. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out of this condemnation, 
ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, the last warning. The Bible says anybody that steps out of line, when you begin to lie to collect money from your members, the Bible says you have denied the faith. That is how God sees you. Once you start, the Bible says you have denied the faith. It is not a joke. We need to be very careful. Let's pray. Let's pray. Are you a child of God already? Have you given your heart to Jesus? If you haven't, say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. You paid for all my sins. Forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Lead me till we meet face to face in heaven. Thank you for answering. And for you as a child of God, begin to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, do not let me be deceived. Don't think you are too much. No, you can't be too much. There are ministers, big ministers, who have become deceived. And they have derailed. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I bring myself before you and I bring your people before you, Jehovah God. And pray, Lord God Almighty, that you hold us, that you help us. Lord, that we do not fall into error and fall into sin. Instead, Jehovah God, that we will persist, that we will stay strong. Lord God, defending the faith until you meet us face to face. Until you take us unto yourself in heaven. And Lord, we pray, bringing your people, anybody that is sick in the body, sick in the mind. Jehovah God, or those that are already weak and they are derailing. Lord, I pray, God, that you stretch forth your hand and heal such people. In the name of Jesus, strengthen your people, Jehovah God, that we will not run this race in, in, in vain. But God Almighty, Father, we will stay strong until the day you come to take us. Thank you for answering us, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.